In this Billboard breakdown, we're gonna remake Yes End by Ariana Grande, and it's gonna sound like this. Alright guys, my name is Bad Habit. I'm so excited about this breakdown. This is my jam. We're gonna dive deep into the production of Yes and the new single by Ariana Grande that just debuted at number one on Billboard. So the first thing that I want to point out is that this song is heavily inspired by Vogue, a song by Madonna that came out in 1990. And for this one that was produced by Ilya and the GOAT, Max Martin, they used a lot of the same instruments, a lot of the same sounds. We're gonna see a lot of those coming back into this song. The drums come from a 909 drum machine, which is the sound of house music. And there's plenty of plugins like this one from Roland. There's plenty of samples, but today I wanna have a little bit more fun. And so instead of using this plugin or samples, I'm gonna make the drums in this drum machine that I have right here, my TR-8S by Roland, which has all of these sounds. And then we're gonna record the drums into Ableton. So the pattern is very, very simple. It's a kick four on the floor, clap, snare and an open eye hat. There's also some closed hi-hats, but those are not coming from the 909 drum machine and I'm gonna show you right now. So I'm gonna just put the kicks four on the floor like that. A little bit longer. Okay, I like this. And then we're gonna add a clap. Very simple. So we gotta try to match the tone of the clap that they used. I think it was tuned a little bit higher than this. Something like that. And we definitely want some decay, some tail. This is good. Now we need the snare. The snare is definitely one of the most recognizable elements of a 909 drum machine. And so it's very important that we nail the actual tone, the actual sound. And one thing that I love is when it's squashed, when it's like really noisy, really ch To obtain this, we can just increase the snap. You can hear how this is bringing out a lot of noise. Maybe tuned a little bit higher. There's also one more snare here on number eight. And now, since this is the only hit that we have in 16th notes, we might add some swing. This is already helping, you know? This is starting to make you move. But if you really want to move, you gotta add that open eye hat. Yeah, there we go. The tone of the open eye hat is one of the most important thing in a 909. Like it can make or break the song. Listen how, like it, it really affects the whole tone of the drums. And in this case, tuned a little bit higher. Yeah. Something like that. But one thing that we haven't talked about is the closed hi-hat, because the closed hi-hat doesn't come from the 909. It's probably coming from an 808, but with this drum machine, I can just put 808 sounds also in this 909 kit. This is gonna help us like adding some cool accents to the beat. But before I even do this, there's one thing that I love to do whenever I'm recording this drum machine. The sounds are there, but there's not much of that analog feeling. And of course, like this is a digital drum machine, it's not analog. And to add back a little bit of that feeling, one thing that I like to do is put a pre on the whole TR8 group, which is this one. And I wanna use this knee right here. I just want a little bit of that grip, a little bit of, of that saturation. Okay, so let's add that closed hi-hat. So what I need to do is just change this closed hi-hat that comes from the 909 and change it with an 808 closed hi-hat. Yeah, I love this. Okay, so I recorded in the tracks that we needed. And as you can see, I took different takes like uh, take 11 for the open eye hat, take two for the closed hi hat. Because if you look carefully, all of these hits look slightly different. This is not the same thing as taking a sample and just copying and pasting the same clap over and over. See, this clap is slightly different than this one and slightly different than this one. And even if this is not analog, the concept is kind of the same. I just love to add a little bit of real feeling to the song, even if, of course, in the context of like the whole thing, you're never gonna notice. So like I was expecting, the kick is the only thing that 
is really far from the kick that we need. And so I think I'm gonna replace this one. But before I do this, I wanna add the bass line right away to get a feeling of what's happening in the song. Yeah. Yeah, I love this one. I'm gonna copy the drums also in the verse, but we're gonna mute the hats in the verse. They're not playing. And now let's record this. Yeah, love that fill. And now we get to the verse, and in the verse the bass line is a little bit different because the chords are changing. And in the verse we actually have a pedal, a bass pedal. We have a bass line, but you could play the chords of the verse on one single bass note. And it's kind of the same thing that happens in Greedy. In the verse they have this bass pedal, and then when you get to the chorus, the chords are changing, and you have this you know, effect of something new happening in song, which is super smart. And who knows, maybe it's a new trend. It's actually something that was very common in the 80s and 90s. Now the hook sounds like this. And we have the verse that sounds like this. Okay, it's starting to feel like we're getting somewhere. But let me replace that kick because I really don't like that. I need something punchy. This is house music, so I think I'm gonna look into my folders of house music like Vengeance, something like this. I like this one, but what about this one? What about this one? The, the top is a little bit aggressive, but if I can soften it, maybe it'll work. I'm loving it. Or let me try this other plugin that I love on kicks, which is Saturation Knob. I usually keep it on low, like I don't like to go super hard with this, but it really helps. Yeah. Okay, let me soften this. This is the sweet spot. And in the song, I can hear clearly they have some hi-hats on top of the kick. For the top of the kick, I really like to go through some of these vintage drum machine samples that I have. I can hear there's so many things and it's gonna take me a while. Okay, so after selecting a bunch of samples, I committed to a few of these. So this is helping in the top of the kick and you can see that I also added an EQ to cut some of the low frequencies so they blend better uh, together with the bottom kick and then I added a few hi-hats and so now this is the top of the kick and this is our like main kick that of course still has its own top but layered together with this one now they sound like this and without it Right? Like this is so helpful and also in the context. You can now hear that hi-hat on top of the kick. Okay, so before we move on to the chords, which we're gonna do in a second, I need to take care of these sounds, like of the snare, of the clap, the open I had, the sounds that we recorded from TR8, because they still don't sound like they should, they're not like smacking. I wanna start from the hat because it's the main thing that makes you move in this groove, and if I listen carefully to the song, it sounds to me like they have layered this open I hat, like the classic 909 hat, with something else. It sounds like it has more body than mine. And I'm gonna put this one that we recorded into a sampler so we can tweak it and then layer it with something else. And it sounds to me like this hi-hat might have a little bit of pitch envelope, which means that the sound gets pitched for a certain amount of time that we're gonna set here with this envelope and you're gonna hear what it does. I want the hi-hat to sound like it sounds now, but to be pitched up slightly towards the end. Okay, something like that. If I mute it, now you notice it, right? And I like this. It's making it stand out just a little bit more. But I still feel like I should layer this with some more noisier hats. Like, I don't know, it, it reminds me of an 808 open hat. So I found these two sounds to layer. This one, which plays every time the open I hat plays, and also this one, because if you listen carefully, you're gonna hear that sometimes another hi-hat is gonna play. And this stays also in the verse, so. Okay, so real quick, the snare and the clap need some saturation, some compression. I want the snare to be smashed a little bit more, even more noisy, like tsh, and the clap instead to have harder transients. For the snare, I'm gonna use this plugin because it has compression, it has the transient shaper. If I go this way, it becomes snappy, you know? But I want it squashed instead. 
And now let's add some compression here. Yeah. Give me some gain. I need it in parallel, I think. Saturation, let me add a radiator. Not too much. Nope. It's pretty good. Oh my God. <laughs> the difference is massive. On the clap, I like to use the DBX 160, which is just great on drums. Okay. I'm also gonna add this transient master really light. But now I feel like we need a second clap, like another 909 clap, maybe more distorted. I think, I think we can find something in like machine, which I use all the time. This is pretty cool. This is what I was looking for, yes. Now the clap from the TR-8 gives the transient and this one instead is a little bit more saturated with more tail, I love this. I feel like we're missing something on this group to make sure that we can still hear the tail of the clap when the beat is playing. Like I can't really hear it, you know? And I've used this one before on claps and snare. This is doing exactly what I needed. Bringing out a little bit of that tail, but without... Yeah! <laughs> so this is the sweet spot. Now I can hear the tail of the clap. Love this. I have my go-to plugins when I'm working with the 909 and I love this feature right here. This is gonna help us bringing out the snare even more, like actually bringing out all of the higher frequencies. I'm gonna start from a preset, like, I don't know, saturation. So listen to this. Listen to the hi-hat and the snare. This is of course too much, but this is what I wanted from this plugin. Let me increase the temperature a little bit. Yeah. Listen if I mute it. Oh. Oh yeah, it's really helping the snare and the hi-hat. There are a few more layers of drums, especially a tambourine loop that you can hear and it goes like and also some percussions that might come from another one of these drum machines. And for this one, I think I'm gonna go for the TR-727. This is of course too much. It's not what we're looking for, but this is the kind of sounds that I hear in the original beat. So this is what I came up with. I just tweaked a few things of a pattern that was just a house pattern that I found. And super quiet in the mix and I'm gonna pan it hard to the left because this is where I'm hearing it in the original beat. I quickly added a tambourine and a few cymbals, a ride and a proper 909 crash. In the verse, you can clearly hear both the tambourine and the percussion loop. So we're gonna keep the whole drum bus processing for last because now I wanna move on to the keys, the chords, and I'm gonna start from that plucky sound that we hear in the intro and throughout the whole song, which to me sounds a little bit like a piano, but it reminds me of those pianos that were resampled into old samplers. So I found this sound inside the emulator, which is a legendary sampler. I'm gonna have to tweak it a little bit. It's kind of reminding me of that. Like it sounds a little bit like a piano, but it's layered together with strings. If we shape it to be plucky, maybe this can work. Okay, so now it's so much better. And these are the chords that I just played in. I quantized them and just put a little bit of swing. Okay, okay, we're getting there. But there are a few things that I'm hearing in their sound that we still don't have here. First, it sounds a little bit more lo-fi, less highs, less lows. So we're gonna do that. Second, I'm hearing a super quick delay, maybe 16th notes or something like that. It's like fluttering, it's like And three, it's sounding to me like it's going through some cabinets or something like that. So we're gonna try all of these three things and see if we can get a little closer. So lo-fi, vinyl. Oh yeah, 1950s sounds great. Less highs, less lows. I like this. Is it lo-fi enough? More lo-fi. Yeah, I like the movement that it's adding to the sound. Is it lo-fi enough to you? More lo-fi. A little bit more flutter and wow. And some high pass. That's it. Is it actually doing something? 
<laughs> I'm not sure, it's, it's okay. But now I wanna add this delay that I was talking about. We're gonna put it in parallel. So we preserve the dry signal. So it might be 16th notes. Maybe not even synced. Yeah, yeah. Let's put it digital. Oh wow, I love this one. And with this plugin, I added some compression that's helping with the transients, uh, some saturation, some EQing, and then I removed some frequencies that were really hurting my ears. So some of these like whistles, you know, these kind of things. So I was looking for a sound to layer with the main one and I found this one that curiously enough has the same kind of delay already in the preset. And so now we have a layer of these two that we need to put through a speaker or something like that, like a cabinet. And I love this plugin to do these kind of things because look at this, look how many options you have. You can just have the sounds go through, I don't know, a cell phone. You can have them go through a radio. This is how it sounds through a toy mic. It's not what we need now, but you get the idea. And I'm pretty happy with this one because listen, if I mute it, right? I think this is going in the right direction. Of course, we'll never know what they used exactly to make that sound, but this is the thinking behind it, you know? This is the approach that you have to have if you wanna go for a sound like that. Yeah, it should be fine. I cleaned up some more frequencies right here, and now it's time to add the sidechain to all of these layers, because now we have the bass, we have the keys, we have the drums, but there's no sidechain, there's no pumping effect. For this one, I'm gonna use a very simple compressor, nothing special. And for the bass, instead, I'm gonna use Shaper Box. I'm not gonna keep it at 100%, maybe a little bit less than that. but I'm barely hearing the bass now with all of these layers. So we definitely need to add some saturation to make sure that we can hear it on every device, whether it's a phone or you're listening in your car. Yeah. But now it's becoming a little bit boxy here. So I'm gonna add the chords in the verse now, but I'm gonna do it with a slightly different sound. It's possible that they also kept these plucks in the verse, maybe filtered, but I feel like the main sound is something like brassy. It could be, could be a brass coming from the DX7 or like one of those FM synths. I don't know, let's try that. No. This maybe in the lower octave. Oh, this is not bad. We just need to get rid of this crazy delay. Okay, can I make it darker maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. too long, too like it has to be really plucky, really short. It took me a few takes to get this effect and also I had to adjust the length of some notes, but now we have this. Yeah. And I added the same type of delay that we added before. So a very short delay, 52 milliseconds, followed by a very short room here, so. So with filtering, it will become something like that. It sounds pretty good. So two more things are left in the chorus. In these two final bars, we don't have these plucky chorus playing. There's like a sustained pad that I love, like a super cool sound. I mean, it's nothing special. It's like just a saw wave, but it's so on point because you have all of this plucky feeling, right? And then you get here and then you have those sustained pads that we're gonna add in a second. And on top of that, there is a little like, I don't know, bells, a glockenspiel, could be something like that. And then we definitely need more layers for these plucky chords in the chorus, because in the chorus, it feels like these plucks are becoming bigger with more body. And this sound alone doesn't have the body that is needed for a proper hook. For the pad, I know where to look. I remember there's a patch inside this one. It's this one, just a saw yeah. And I know where to look for the bells too. The D50 has some great bell sounds. How about this one? Yeah. 
pretty happy with this. Just wanna bring out some more frequencies using an OTT, which is great on bells. Yeah, it's bringing out the bell sound, but we might need to layer it. And this is the sound that we need because it has that sparkle that the other one doesn't have. And so now together, they sound like this. Now for the layers of the hook, it's just impossible to say what they used because it's a blend of a lot of instruments. They just add body to the main sound that we already have. So we gotta keep that in mind, but I don't think it matters which specific sounds we're gonna use here. We just need to find some layers that can fit well together with the main one and that can cover the frequencies that these sounds are not covering. Like in the chorus, we have this. Okay, this is very lo-fi and we need all of the other frequencies. This is a hook, we need to bring the energy up, right? So these blocks need to be supported by some sounds like that. I found three sounds and also I added the brass from the verse in the chorus as well. If we listen to these sounds on their own, they're not gonna sound great to be honest. Like this one, it's just like some sort of like piano. I added a little delay to it to give it some life. And this one, another piano. But as you can hear, these are covering all of the frequencies that we're missing from the other one, like mostly like the, the low, mid, and this instead adds some sparkle on the top end. These are pretty bad sounds if you listen to them like this. But now if I play you this group, okay, now you start to get that feeling that we were missing. And now with the plucks, we have something that just feels bigger. It doesn't matter if the sounds on their own are not great, but this is what I needed. This is what we have. Ooh. Without these, the hook is empty. And then... Hey! Strings were also missing, just a single note, super simple, but this keeps the energy up in the chorus. So the only thing that I'm actually taking from the original song is this, this like vocal chop loop. And the reason I'm taking this is because it's impossible to replicate it. We'll never know exactly what she was saying, the words that were chopped to get this, but this is a super common and super easy effect to obtain. Basically they just chopped Ariana's vocals and then once they found the syllables that they liked, so these, they applied some little alter boy and they brought the format down. So if you want to obtain this effect, this is how you do it. I was also hearing some people talking like a crowd in the background. And so I found a sample of a crowd. This is it. There is one thing left. I need to reorganize this session because like now it's a real mess. I need to color code it. And then we're gonna add a few plugins to the drum bus to process the drums a little bit better and to make them stand out. Okay, I can finally see what's happening in the session. I reorganized it and I applied a very simple mastering just to make sure that we're not clipping. And this is what we have now. We're very close, but you know I like to add some compression and saturation to the drum bus. I'm gonna do it with my favorite compressor for drums, which is this one, and I'm gonna set it this way. Something like that. Followed by some saturation. I love this plugin, especially on analog stuff. There's a preset called Analog Feel. <laughs> Might be a little bit too aggressive, but I love this one. A little bit of magic, and I'm happy with this. Just let me clip it. Just clipping a little bit on the kick and the snare. See it here? Very, very subtle. Ooh. 
All right, guys, we got to the end of this amazing beat. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I really hope you enjoyed the process and that you learned something. I'm so proud of how it came out. So if you liked it, make sure to like the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you want to see more stuff like that, you're going to find all the billboard breakdowns in this playlist right here. And you're going to find more remakes on my channel that's linked in the description. If you have any questions or if you want me to remake a specific song, just let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next billboard breakdown.